Creating this searchable drop down list in Excel is so easy. I'm wondering why I never thought of it before. It doesn't require any formulas or VBA and it has all the bells and whistles you'd expect from a searchable drop down list, including automatic sorting, ignoring duplicates, and an option to select all. Here I've used a searchable drop down list to enable users to choose which product category they want displayed in the chart. They can type in a few characters from the name that they're looking for, select from the list and click OK and you can see everything updates. Now notice this chart has a few features not possible in a pivot chart including an average line and markers for the minimum and maximum values and this is one reason you might like to use this technique. Let's step through the process. Now the chart and the drop down list are based on this table of data. Now keep in mind that your searchable drop down list can be based on a single field or a column in a larger table as I have here, or it could simply reference a single column of data. So to create the searchable drop down list, select your table or a cell in the table, insert, and then pivot table. Yes, the secret here is that we're using a pivot table. Now, all you need to do is choose where you want your pivot table placed. So keep in mind that this is going to be the cell that contains your searchable drop down list. I'm going to put it on an existing worksheet and I've got one set up here called demo. I'll place it in cell B5 and click OK. Now all I need to do is add the field that I want my searchable drop down list based on to the filter area. So you just left click and drag it into filters. And here I have my searchable drop down list. It's already sorted in alphabetical order. There's no duplicates and it has an option to select all. I haven't had to write a formula or any VBA code or macros. It couldn't be simpler. Now by default, pivot tables are formatted blue, but I want mine to be more subtle. So I'm gonna change the design and up here in the pivot table styles gallery, I want this light color that has no formatting. It actually still has a gray cell outline. So if you wanted to completely get rid of that, you could create your own style. So right click any of the styles after the first one and then duplicate. And here you can go about formatting your own pivot table style. I'm going to leave it as this for now. One use for this searchable drop down list is to reference it in a formula. So I'm going to create the chart that we looked at previously and I need to use the SUMIFS formula to build a table that I'll use to populate my chart. So I want to find the gross profit for the month of January. You can see the date up there is just for the first of the month. And I want to pick up the product category. So let's select a product category. I'll just choose Bluetooth headphones. And then in this cell here, I want to test, first of all, whether the item in the searchable drop-down list is all because if it's all, I want to sum all of the gross profit for the period of January, February, March, and so on. And I need to absolute cell C3. So I'm testing that it equals all, and remember all is in parentheses. If it equals all, then I want to sum if, and I need some ifs for this because I've got two criteria, and my sum range is going to be my gross profit and the first criteria range is the date column and the criteria is back on the demo sheet. So whether the table to date column is greater than or equal to the date here, remember that's the 1st of January and back on the data, we want to also check that the date is less than or equal to the end of the month. So we need to calculate the end of the month. So we can use the EO month function. Based on this date here, we want to find the end of the current month. So we use zero as the argument. Close parentheses on EO month and close parentheses on sum ifs. So this is our first sum ifs. It's just going to sum all of the gross profit for the current month. The next argument, so the value if false, is going to be the same, except it's also going to check the product category. So I've just copied that sum ifs and I'm going to paste it in. Let's make the formula bar a little wider. And what I'll do is Alt and Enter here, just to wrap that part of the formula down onto the next line. So now all we need to do is add our third criteria, which is 
whether the product category on the data table matches the product category selected in the searchable drop down list. And again, we need to F4 to absolute this cell here so it always remains on C3. And I'm going to close my parentheses on the sum ifs. And we already have an extra one for closing the if formula. So I can press enter. My number formats already formatted to round the values in millions. I'm just going to copy that down. So we've got our gross profit. Now I just need to find the minimum, maximum and average. So we're just going to use an if formula because I only want to return the value for the month that contains the minimum. So we're going to find the minimum of the data in the gross profit column and we'll absolute that. And if it equals the value on the current row, so if the minimum equals the value on the current row, then return the value on the current row. Otherwise, we're going to just return the NA error and we'll use the NA function to do that. So I'll press enter and obviously January doesn't contain the minimum, but let's copy it down. February contains the minimum. Keep in mind that my numbers are formatted in millions. So for this product category, there appears to be many months with a gross profit of 1.1 and 1.2 million, but that's just rounding on the face of the cell. The chart will display the actual underlying value and the min and max formulas will find the correct month. Let's do the same for max. And you know what, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it in. And instead of minimum, I'm going to enter maximum. And that will save me a few seconds. There we have the maximum, so July contains the maximum. And the reason we're returning NAs here as opposed to blanks is because when we use a line chart, we want to return an NA because that won't plot the line. If we put a blank in there or a zero, the line would dip down to the horizontal axis, and that's not what I want. Okay, and lastly, I just want to find the average of all of the months, absolute, and then I can copy that down. So I'm ready to create my chart. We'll insert, and we're going to go with a line chart. Let's just move it over here, and I'll make it a little wider. And we'll just give it a bit more space so that my horizontal axis is all easily readable. Okay, let's tidy it up. We're going to get rid of the grid lines, and I like to put my legend at the top. Let's move the chart title across here to the left. And while I'm here, I'm going to link this chart title to the value in the drop down list. So with the outside of the chart title selected, I'm going to click in the formula bar equals and click in the cell containing my drop down list and press enter. So now that's linked. Let's move the legend across here to the right. This gives me a bit more room for my chart. So let's make it a bit bigger. Okay. Now my minimum and maximum aren't showing up in the chart and that's because they're just one dot, but we'll fix that in a moment. First, I'm going to select this line for average and control one to open the format data series pane. On the paint bucket here, I'm going to make my line a dash. So we'll select that one there. Just makes it a bit more subtle. And next, let's make this a paler gray. So we'll select this gray here. Now I need to format the minimum and maximum. I can't select them in the chart, so I'm going to go up to the format pane and in the drop down list here, I can select them. So you can see there it is there. Let's go about formatting it. So I don't want a line, but I do want a marker. We'll give it a built-in marker, which is this dot. I'll make it a size nine. I don't want it to have any fill. I want it to be like a circle. So the border will have a solid line and this is the minimum amount. So let's give it an orange color and we'll just make that width a bit bolder. All right, let's do the same now for the maximum. So I'll select it from the list. I want it to have no line, but the marker is the built-in dot size nine, no fill, solid border, this one's a positive value. Let's go with blue and we'll make it thicker. So now I have my chart that's linked to my searchable drop down list. So now when my user wants to choose a product category, they can go in here and type in what they're looking for, select it from the list and click OK. 
Let's minimize those and you can see everything updates. What I need to do though is format my pivot table so that it doesn't adjust upon refresh. So right click pivot table options. Now I can say stop auto fit column widths on update. And that way when my user chooses a different item from the drop down list, it's not going to resize. Finally, the other thing I like about using this technique is that the drop down list is permanently visible, unlike a data validation list where it only appears when the cell is selected. And you can see here I've got cell E3 selected, but we can see the drop down button on the face of the cell. Now, while I love using a pivot table to create a searchable drop down list, it does have a few shortcomings. First of all, it's not suited to using it as a data validation list for data entry inside of a table because it requires two cells, one for the field name and one for the drop down list itself. The next issue, if you want to call it that, is that if the source data changes, for example, if we had a new product category added here, then the list in the drop down list doesn't automatically include that new item. What we have to do is right click and refresh the pivot table. Alternatively, we can go into pivot table options and on the data tab, we can check the box refresh data when opening the file. And that way, at least it's up to date every time the file is opened. Lastly, if you have any blanks in your source data, so for example, if I delete this cell, I've now got a blank in my product category. If I go back to the drop down list and refresh it, you'll see that at the very bottom of the drop down list, we have an item for blank. So with pivot tables, it won't filter out those blanks, but at least they're sorted to the very end of the list. Now in the scheme of things, I think these shortcomings are easy to live with. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. I hope you can make use of this technique. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.